speaking of how fast things have been going, let's talk about scaling laws. So mm -hmm. for people who don't know, uh, maybe it's good to talk about this whole uh, idea of scaling laws. What are they? Where do things stand? And where do you think things are going? I think it was interesting. The original scaling laws paper by OpenAI was slightly wrong because I think of some uh, issues they did with uh, learning rate schedules. Uh, and then Chinchilla showed a more correct version. And then from then, people have again kind of deviated from doing the compute optimal thing because people start now optimizing more so for uh, making the thing work really well, given a given an inference budget. And I think there are a lot more dimensions to these curves than what we originally used of just compute, number of uh, parameters and data. Like inference compute is, is the obvious one. I think context length is another obvious one. So if you care, like let's say you care about the two things of inference compute and, and then uh, context window, maybe the thing you want to train is some kind of SSM because they're much, much cheaper and faster at super, super long context. And even if maybe it has 10x worse scaling properties during training, meaning you have to spend 10x more compute to train the thing to get the same, same level of capabilities, um, it's worth it because you care most about that inference budget for really long context windows. So it'll be interesting to see how people kind of play with all these dimensions. So yeah, I mean, you speak to the multiple dimensions, obviously the original conception was just looking at the variables of the size of the model as measured by parameters and the size of the data as measured by the number of tokens and looking at the ratio of the two. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of a compelling notion that there is a number or at least a minimum. And it seems like one was emerging. Um, do you still believe that there is a kind of bigger is better? I mean, I think bigger is certainly better for just raw performance. And raw intelligence. And raw intelligence. I think the, the path that people might take is, uh, I'm particularly bullish on distillation. And like, the, yeah, how many knobs can you turn to if we spend like a ton, ton of money on training, like get the most capable uh, cheap model? Right, like really, really caring as much as you can. Because like the, the, the naive version of caring as much as you can about inference time compute is what people have already done with like the llama models or just overtraining the shit out of 7B models um, on way, way, way more tokens than is chinchilla optimal. Right. But if you really care about it, maybe the thing to do is what Gamma did, which is let's just not let, let's not just train on tokens, let's literally train on uh minim minimizing the KL divergence with uh the distribution of gamma. 27b, right? So knowledge distillation there. Um, and you're spending the compute of literally training this 27 billion model, uh, billion parameter model on all these tokens just to get out this, I don't know, smaller model. And the distillation gives you just a faster model. Smaller means faster. Yeah, distillation in theory is, um, I think, getting out more signal from the data that you're training on. And it's like another, it's, it's perhaps another way of getting over, not like completely over, but like partially helping with the data wall where like you only have so much data to train on let's like train this really really big model on all these tokens and we'll distill it into the smaller one and maybe we can get more signal uh per token uh for this for this much smaller model than we would have originally if we trained it so if i gave you 10 trillion dollars how would you <laughs> how would you spend it <laughs> i mean you can't buy an island or whatever um how would you allocate it in terms of improving the the big model versus maybe paying for HF in the RLHF yeah. or... Yeah, I think there's a lot of these secrets and details about training these large models that I, I just don't know and are only privy to the large labs. And the issue is I would waste a lot of that money if I even attempted this because I wouldn't know those things. Uh, suspending a lot of disbelief and assuming like you, you had the know-how um, and operate, or, or if you're saying like you have to operate with like the, l the limited information you have now. No, no, no. Actually, I would say you swoop in and you get all the information, all the little heuristics, all the little parameters, all the uh, all the parameters that define how the thing is trained. Mm -hmm. If we look in how to invest money for the next five years in terms of maximizing what you called raw intelligence, I mean, isn't the answer like really simple? You just you just try to get as much compute as possible. Like, like at the end of the day, all all you need to buy is the GPUs, and then sort of uh, the the researchers can find find all the all like they they can sort of you know you can tune whether you want to pre-train a big model or a small model. Like, 
Well, this gets yeah, into the again. question of like, are you really limited by compute and money or are you limited by these other things? And like, I, I'm, I'm more privy to Arvid's, Arvid's belief that we're, we're sort of ideal limited, but there, there's always that like... But if you have a lot of compute, you can run a lot of experiments. So you would run a lot of experiments versus like use that compute to train a gigantic model. I would, but I I do believe that we are limited in terms of ideas that we have. I think, yeah, because e even with all this compute and like, you know, all the data you could collect in the world, I think you really are ultimately limited by not even ideas, but just like really good engineering. Like even with all the capital in the world, would you really be able to assemble like there aren't that many people in the world who really can like make the difference here um and and there's so much work that goes into research that is just like pure really really hard engineering work um as, as like a very kind of hand wavy example if you look at the original transformer paper you know how much work was kind of joining together a lot of these really interesting concepts embedded in, in the literature versus then going in and writing all the code, like maybe the CUDA kernels, maybe whatever else. I don't know if it ran on GPUs or TPUs originally, such that it actually saturated the GPU, GPU performance, right? Getting GNOME is here to go in and do do all of this code, right? And GNOME is like probably one of the best engineers in the world. Or maybe going a step further, like the next generation of models, having these things, like getting model parallelism to work and scaling it on like, you know, thousands of, or maybe tens of thousands of like V100s, uh, which I think GBDE3 may have been. Um, there's just so much engineering effort that has to go into all of these things to make it work. Um, if you really brought that cost down to like, you know, maybe not zero, but just made it 10x easier, made it super easy for someone with really fantastic ideas to immediately get to the version of like the new architecture they dreamed up that is like getting 50, 40% uh, utilization on the GPUs. I think that would just speed up research by a ton. I mean, I think I think if if you see a clear path to improvement, you you should always sort of take the low hanging fruit first, right? And I think probably OpenAI and and all the other labs did did the right thing to pick off the low hanging fruit, where the low hanging fruit is like sort of you you could scale up to a GPT four point two five scale, um, and and you just keep scaling and and like things things keep getting better, and as long as like you. There's there's no point of experimenting with new ideas when like everything everything is working, and you, you should sort of bang on it and try to try to get as much as much juice out as possible. And then and then maybe maybe when you really need new ideas for, I think I think if you're if you're spending ten trillion dollars, probably want to spend some so, you know then actually like reevaluate your ideas. Like probably you're idea limited at that point. I think all of us believe new ideas are probably needed to get you know all the way there to AGI, and. All of us also probably believe there exist ways of testing out those ideas at smaller scales um, and being fairly confident that they'll play out. It's just quite difficult for the labs in their current position to dedicate their very limited research and engineering talent to exploring all these other ideas when there's like this core thing that will probably like improve performance um, for some like decent amount of time. Yeah, but also these big labs like winning. So they're, they're just going wild. Okay. 